Hey guys, it's Pastor Jeff from Calvary, and I just want to say thank you for taking the time out for tonight's Bible study. Uh, we will be in Colossians chapter 2. We're going to read verses 6 through 12. So while you're taking the time to, to get turned over to those scriptures, I want to make a couple of really important and uh, wonderful announcements. Uh, the first one is this coming Sunday morning at 11 a.m., we will be opening the sanctuary back up for worship time. Uh, we're not having Sunday school yet, and we're not doing children's church yet. We'll actually have a segment in our services on Sundays for the next several weeks for the kids. So you guys will want to come and participate in that. So I hope that the families will make plans to be here if you possibly can. Pastor Harris has got a great program for y'all, and you're going to enjoy it a lot. So come out Sunday morning, 11 a.m. The ushers and greeters will be here to help everybody know what our new system will look like and what it looks like getting everybody in and out safely. And we actually made arrangements here in the sanctuary for you'll be able to space out a little bit or spread out as we need to to uh, be careful about our social distancing and we are looking forward to having everybody back on the property also next Wednesday night we will also be back on the property for uh, Wednesday night meal and we'll also have the uh, first of the uh, Pastor Harris's summer adventures and I think it's messy game night next Wednesday night at 6 30 or 7 o'clock watch him for the time on that but I think we are looking forward to though getting everybody back here now with that being said let me say this a couple of things about this we will be live streaming both events. We will be live streaming Sunday morning from here, and then also we'll be live streaming next Wednesday night from here. So if you are in the at-risk group or if you're in one of the groups that still needs to take a week or two to wait and be careful about your health, we totally understand that, and you're not going to miss anything. We're going to make sure that we are reaching out to you guys, too, and that you still have uh, ample opportunity or ample ways to participate with us as a church family, okay? So that'll be this coming Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, if everybody was here, I'd make you all say amen. And then next Wednesday night, Summer Adventures be the first one, and we're looking forward to it, and I hope that you guys will make plans and be here, too. Before we get into our scriptures, let's just have a quick word of prayer. And then we'll get into our Bible study time together tonight. Father, we thank you for this day and the blessings that you give us. Lord, we thank you that we have this opportunity to gather together around your word. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us. I pray that you would illuminate the scriptures for us, that, Lord, we might see things here that will help us be more like Jesus. And that, Father, we might know who we are and where we stand in our completion in you. I pray the Lord you'd be with those who've asked an interest in our prayers this week, and there's so many, many things going on in our country today, in our nation, Lord, in our state, around the world, and Lord, we ask that you would come and work in every one of these things as it best pleases you, and Lord, work through us. I pray that God you'd help us to be instruments of your love, and Lord, we'll thank you again for all that you do, for we ask these things today in Jesus' name, amen. Now. An announcement that I forgot, and I want to mention this now as I get ready to get into my teaching time. This coming Saturday morning from 9 till 11, there will be a drop-in prayer time here in the sanctuary. So if you can come in, and maybe you can't come stay the whole time. If you can, that's wonderful. But maybe you're out and about, or you're going to be going to something you've got to go do. But we're hoping that if you have time, you'll be able to stop in from 9 to 11 this coming Saturday morning to be a part of just a, an organized prayer time together. I think Brother Gary's putting together some announcements for that too, but it'll be a sweet time together. And we just want to come and ask God's blessing on what we're getting ready to do and, and uh, just to have the time to... It never hurts to call on God. Amen. So Sunday, Saturday morning at from 9 o'clock till 11 o'clock, if you can come, we'd love to have you then too. So let's read our scriptures tonight. The Bible says in uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, the Bible says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Now, I want to stop reading right here just for the sake of time. Now, I'm looking at my verses now and realizing 
that I'm probably not going to get to all of these verses tonight because there's a lot here to cover. So going back up to verses 6 and 7, and I think I preached on these last Wednesday night a little bit. If you hadn't had a chance to see that video, I hope you'll go back and uh, go back into our library and see if you can get that. But what Paul is reminding them of is where they started. What, what was the root of their faith? And it was their faith. They were saved by faith alone in Christ alone. The, the gospel had been preached to the Colossians and they had received that message and they had accepted what God had done for them and had been born again. And so they thank God they, their root though was in Christ Jesus. And then Paul is saying, since that is the beginning of the Christian walk, then faith will also be part of the continuance of the Christian walk. We don't, we don't get saved and then find a seat. We don't get saved and then just coast till we get to heaven. Uh, we've got a life to live between here and there. So Paul then in verse number 7 starts talking to them about the progress or the growth that takes place in the Christian life. And it says rooted, okay, and it means once and for all rooted. And then it says built up in him. And this is a construction term that means that after a foundation is laid, then there's progress forward. We don't just, we don't just pour a foundation and let that be all there is. There's, there's adding to what we do from there. Established in the faith, and then um, that's the schooling we learn and then as we have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So you go back and look through this, the outcome of being rooted, the outcome of being built up, the outcome of being established in the faith, and the outcome of uh, these, these doctrines and these, these tenets in our life is that we, we abound with thanksgiving. Amen. I mean, because God sends us a teacher. God sends us his word. God sends us his message. And by that, we are made more like Christ. By that, we are challenged to live the Christian life. By that, we are made uh, more into the image of the Lord Jesus. But now look in verse 8, because here's what happens after you've been saved just a little while. The Bible says here, beware, lest any man spoil you through... Uh, philosophy or vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Now, I want to show you something here. The word beware means to be on your guard. Uh, it's actually a military term, and it means to set guards carefully. It means to be really cautious about the, the, what the false teachers were doing. Now, the false teachers at Colossae were made up of an interesting bunch. They were uh, oriental mysticism, astrologist philosophizers, Jewish legalism, and the Gnostic legalism. I mean, there was a big mix of false teaching and false doctrine that came at the people at Colossae all the time. And Paul is reminding them uh, of where their doctrine came from. You've been, you are, you are therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk in him, okay? But Paul is saying, beware lest any man spoil you. Be on your guard lest any man spoil you. And that word spoil literally means to take captive. It means to lead away as a captive. It means to capture you. It means to capture your goods. It means to capture your fruitfulness. It means to capture the joy in your life. It means, it's, the, it's a big word, but it, it means to, we should be careful that we're not spoiled, that we should not go after things that are not after Christ. So look at what he says. Don't be spoiled through philosophy. Now, there's a lot of people who see the word philosophy here, and they, they, we try to apply the modern day word for philosophy for the biblical word of philosophy. But guys, the biblical word here is not a positive word, okay? It's a word that means the reasonings of men, only the reasonings of men, okay? It means the, the pursuit of truth without ever really reaching it. It means the pursuit of wisdom without ever really attaining it. It's the, it, it's the it, and, and what it turns into is the pursuit of something without ever realizing the capture, okay? It's the promise of something without having to deliver on the promise. And I'll come back to that in just a minute. So it's the beware not to be caught up in just the seeking of philosophy. Now, the, the modern day word of philosophy is not a bad word. There's a philosophy of the Christian life, okay? There's a philosophy of truth. There's a philosophy of right, right and wrong, okay? But this word in the, in the New Testament is not the same as our word today. So don't, don't confuse it for that. But then you've got philosophy and, and vain deceit. And, and when you look at this, how are people being captured, okay? The false teachers would look for people who had been converted, they would look for people who had been born again, would look for people who were Christians who were not growing in their faith, okay? They would look for people who were not educated or in the Scriptures. 
they would look for people who were not really serious about their Christian life. And, and here's why they would pick people already saved, okay, or people who were already seeking after God, all right? And, and because the false teachers promised that, yes, Jesus was good, but Jesus wasn't quite enough, okay? You needed to add something to that. You needed to add more to him, okay? And so they added philosophy. They, and then they added, and by the way, that word vain deceit literally means empty-handed uh, promises, empty-worded promises, things that they could not possibly deliver. And it, it was a deceitful way for them to build up their converts. Now, I want to say this about these, the Christians here at Colossae. There were people who went after the false teachers. There were people who went after the, the false doctrines or the philosophy of the false teachers because of what they added to it, okay? What they, what they added was not more of Christ, okay? What they added was their thinking about more of Christ, okay? What they added were their steps to godliness. What they added were their steps to holiness. When we read this down here in verse 11 and 12, when he's talking about circumcision, this is not coming from Jewish uh, agnostics or Jewish people who are trying to, to get the Colossians to participate in Jewish rituals or doctrine. These are the Gnostic uh, philosophers who are trying to get them to do that, okay? And the Gnostics were saying, well, yes, you're a Christian, and yes, you, yes, we believe in Jesus, but let's add the Old Testament law, let's add the Old Testament holy days, let's add the Old Testament feast, let's add the Old Testament, all of these other things, and we'll bring this into this, and if you practice these things, you will become a spiritual elite, okay? You'll become a, a real spiritual person. You will be partaking of a higher plane, okay? And which was an empty promise because that's not true, all right? Guys, I just have a simple observation for you for the people who, and there are still people today who preach and teach that after you've been saved, you still have to go back and keep the Old Testament and try to blend grace and, and, and law and grace together, all right? Now, what's wrong with that teaching? Because I have people all the time who quiz me on this, all right? Guys, if the law in and of itself was enough to save us, why did Jesus come at all? Okay, why would God give his son if the keeping of the law would perfect us? Okay, Paul in the book of Romans is very careful to let us know that by the keeping of the law shall no flesh be justified. Okay, the just, we are justified by faith. Okay, without the deeds of the law. I mean, I could preach the rest of the day on that, but it's a really subtle trap because our flesh wants to believe that we can perfect ourselves. Our flesh wants to believe that by doing these other things, by adding something to, by uh, practicing and the, the circumcision that's mentioned here, which was a, certainly a sign of the Jewish people of their covenant with God, okay? But it was a fleshly sign of a spiritual covenant between God and his people, okay? But now see this for something. It was a fleshly sign of a spiritual covenant, but they turned it into nothing more than a fleshly sign. Okay, they forgot there was a spiritual commitment to this. Okay, and, and God even told them, listen, uh, towards the end of it there, and, and when Jesus came, remember he went after them pretty hard about their keeping of the law and what they had added to the law, and I'm getting ahead of myself here, but there beware about philosophy or vain tradition, or excuse me, vain deceit. And then the next one here are after the tradition of men. And, uh, so you got to see this. When Jesus came, and I think he did this on purpose. He would go to the synagogues on the Sabbath day and turn over their whole teaching. I mean, he would, and I always get tickled because I think that he was, he was like, hey, uh, watch this. All right, and he would go in the synagogue and heal somebody on the synagogue on the Sabbath day because they had been teaching that you weren't supposed to do anything on the Sabbath day. There was even some of the rabbis of the day's teaching that if you started out the, the Sabbath day with something in your mouth, you know, a toothpick or whatever it was, that you would be violating the Sabbath to reach up and take that out. Okay, or they, they had it numbered down to how many steps you could actually take on a Sabbath day. They, they had all these things lined out. And when Jesus showed up, he was trying to get them to understand that they, are, they, are, they, they were right with God, not by their rituals. They, they, they needed to be right with God in relationship with God. Okay, and Jesus, I mean, he, man, he turned over their traditions. Listen, by the time Jesus showed up, the scribes and Pharisees of that day had added so many addendums to the law, and they had added so many more, uh, 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 I don't even know the right word to say it, they had rewritten it so much, and they had added so much to it, it was not even recognizable as the law of Moses, okay? 
And there was a huge division amongst the Jewish people of that day, and I think there still is to this day, over what was written and what was the tradition of the elders, okay? So I don't have time to teach on that tonight, but it's a really good study, okay? But what God is there, what Paul is saying here, he said, listen, don't let anybody steal you away. Don't let anybody lead you away captive. Don't let anybody spoil you through philosophy or vain deceit or after the tradition of men. Now, guys, I've got to say this about tradition. There are traditions that are traditions are a part of every church family. One of our major traditions that we're going to have a hard time not doing uh, this coming Sunday morning, one of our big traditions is we enjoy fellowship time. Well, I say we do. Most of us do. We have introverts in our church family who don't come to church until the, after the fellowship time. And through the years, we've actually moved the fellowship time around so they don't know when it is, so they have to shake hands with everybody anyway. All right. Um, and I get it. I do. And, and I think it's going to be a part of who we are. And, and I'm making everybody, we, if you're here, I would say, come on. Uh, but when you think about this, there are, there are traditions that are part of every church family. Now, yours looks different than ours. There are people from different churches that will hear this tonight, and you don't have any such tradition, all right? But here's the thing. We recognize that as a tradition, okay? We don't elevate that to Scripture. We say, this is what we like. This is what we enjoy. This is our preference, okay? So now, you got to see this, okay? It's all right to have preferences around traditions, okay? We don't build convictions on traditions. We build convictions on Scripture. What does the Bible say? Okay. What does it teach? Okay. That's where we build convictions. Okay. Now, when you get down to the traditions, there, there's freedom. There's liberty. And we're supposed to be at liberty with other people as well. All right. But Paul was saying, be careful that you don't fall for the tradition of men. And then are after the rudiments of the world. And I'm going to preach on this for just a minute, too, because this is a little bit fuller term than I've got time to really deal with it right here. But here's what he's talking about with the rudiments of the world. And it means the ele elemental studies. It means the elemental elements. It means the ABCs. And it means earth, wind, and fire. It means the elements of the universe. Just the basic elements of, of, of something. All right? And here's what the, the Gnostics were teaching. Here's what the astrologers were teaching. Okay? They were teaching that the base elements of everything were, were there and you should follow after them. Earth, wind, fire, you know, the senses. And that was all you should trust. What you could see, hear, taste, touch, whatever the, the, the senses are. They were saying you should, and they were getting people to go out after those things. All right. If you ever wonder how people go after idolatry so hard, okay, it's after the rudiments of the world. Okay. Think about it like this. The children of Israel came up out of the Red Sea singing the song of Moses. Okay, they had just had the Passover. They had, they had just been delivered by a mighty hand, by the hand of God. All right, they go, they're not far over into the wilderness. Moses goes up on the mountain with Joshua. Okay, and you're going to be seeing where I'm going here in a minute. They go up on the mountain. Moses and Joshua are up on the mountain. They're up there for 40 days. God is speaking the law to Moses. Moses comes down the mountain and Joshua says, I hear the sound of battle. And, and Moses says, that's not the sound of battle, Joshua. That's the sound of singing. And they get down there, okay, and here's what's happened. The children of Israel have gotten Aaron to make them a golden calf, okay? Guys, they worshiped a golden calf from then on. I mean, if you go back and study the history of the nation of Israel, God had to deal with them so harshly to get idolatry out of them because they, their, their flesh was, yes, we've seen the signs of God. Yes, they were under the pillar of fire at night and the cloud by day. I mean, they were seeing all of these things that God was saying, I am with you. And when they said, we're going to honor God, what did they do? They made a cow. Okay, I mean, that, that's where the rudiments of this world I'm coming in at. It's the same guy who goes out in the woods, cuts down a tree, builds a fire with part of it, whittles him out a, a weapon with part of it, and then makes him a god out of part of it, and bows down and prays to a tree that he himself cut down, towed it into place that will never answer him for anything ever. Okay, it's after the rudiments of the world. And why are we so prone to that? Okay, we are so prone to that because it gives us something for our flesh to do. Okay, it gives us some way for us to work on what God has worked in. But guys, Paul said, beware to not go after those things because they're not after Christ. Okay, we are born again. We are kept by grace through faith. Okay, now, and, and I want to say this. How does the Christian life happen? How does growth happen in a Christian life? Okay, 
It's not by the addition of law. It's not by the addition of these rituals. It's not by the, the addition of tradition, okay? The Christian life, growth happens in the Christian life, not by addition, okay? But it happens through nutrition, okay? We partake uh, of the ways of God. We partake of uh, the will of God. We partake of the Word of God. We, the Holy Spirit has the, the, the Word of God bear fruit in our lives. And we see and we understand that growth comes from the inside out, never outside in. Never outside in. Matter of fact, beware of any system that tries to teach you how to grow in your Christian life from the outside in. Okay, it's always inside out. That's God's way. So look at this next verse, and I think I'm not going to finish all of this. For in him who, Christ, dwells. And I love this word dwell, and you need to study that word. I'm not going to preach on that right now. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This word fullness is the Greek word pleroma. Okay, and it was a word that the, the Gnostics used to talk about different levels of spirituality and different levels of fullness. And that's why they were adding all these things to the teaching about Jesus Christ. And Paul tears every bit of that down in just one teaching. He says that all fullness dwells in Christ Jesus. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Ready? All the attributes of God Almighty are in Jesus Christ bodily. Okay, and this is a, an important doctrine. Okay. A lot of the Gnostics say that Jesus didn't actually come in the flesh. A lot of the Gnostics were he was some kind of spirit being, okay? A lot of the Gnostics didn't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection to them was a new doctrine. For us, we've had it for a couple of thousand years now, but for them, it was a brand new teaching. And when Paul went around teaching that, it didn't make sense to them that somebody had been raised, resurrected from the dead, okay? And so what did they do? They, they turned it into something other than what the very plain teaching of the Lord Jesus was. Guys, listen, after the resurrection, Jesus went through great pains to make sure they understood that it was him, okay? Glorified him, yes, okay? But they, they, he made sure. Remember when he showed up in the upper room? Hey, do you have anything to eat? Or hey, Thomas, reach here, touch my hands, touch my side. Thomas, look, see, it is me, okay? And even there at the Sea of Galilee when he was sitting there and he ate breakfast with them. I mean, he made sure they knew that that physically was him. Why? Okay, because we would understand, okay, that the man, Jesus Christ, glorified, yes, okay, is seated at the right hand of God right now. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay, you ready? If you are in Christ, you are there. If you are in Christ, you have this. Okay, if you are in Christ, this fullness was born into you the moment you got saved. Okay, now we will spend the rest of our Christian lives understanding that fullness and living that out. Okay, but I don't need to seek fullness outside of Christ. I don't need to go back to philosophy. I don't need to go back to vain deceit. I don't need to go back to the rudiments of the world. I don't need to go back to the traditions of men. Okay. I am complete in him. If you are born again, you are complete in him. Now, let me, I, I'm running ahead of myself here for just a second. Look in verse 10, though, and he tells us this. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Okay? Now, here he's reminding us of our completion and our completeness. And this word completeness is actually a little bit like the word fullness. Okay? Our fullness comes from our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, somebody asked me one time when I was teaching through here on this, this teaching of how do the false teachers, how do the deceivers get so many people to go astray? How do, so, how do they get us, how do they get so many people to go off on, on the, the different philosophies or the different tangents or the, the Lord false teaching, okay? And here it is. And here comes the hook, okay? It's people that don't understand, first of all, who they are in Christ, are all that Christ has done for them, okay? Number two, it's people or Christians, believers, okay, who don't understand that you have to take every teaching that comes to you, every, every tradition that comes to you, everything that presents itself to you as truth, you have to take that and throw it on the scale of the Word. I have to take that and throw it on the scale of the Word. And it doesn't matter who's saying it. I have to go to the Word, Okay? It's people that are, have, have, for some reason or another, been malnourished as Christians. And I've, I've preached and I pastor a lot of people right now who got saved at an early age. And since there was no growth, there was no teaching, they, they didn't really ever get in the Bible. They didn't really ever get a chance to be around God's people. 
Those people, when they, but can I tell you something happened the minute they got where they were getting some nourishment from the scriptures? They grow like crazy. I mean, they, that God starts putting real, real growth to them. They start seeing the, the, the progress of the Christian life. And I don't have time to preach on that tonight. So here it is. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, and after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You want to know why? Because everything other than Christ is less. Everything other than Christ, you're settling for something less than. Okay? If you're in Christ, verse 10, and you are complete in Him. Okay? which is the head of all principality and power. There are people who say Paul could not have written the book of Colossians because it makes too much of Jesus. Guys, if all the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells in him, can we really make too much of him? Okay? I'm going to stop here. I know we read the other verses, but I'm going to stop. I'll, I'll pick up the next verses probably next Wednesday night. But I just want to say thank you again for tuning in and taking time out. And if you joined us after we made the announcements, I hope you'll take a minute and go back and replay the announcements so you can hear what we're talking about for this weekend and for uh, next Wednesday night as well. But thank you so much. Let's have prayer, and then I'll let you go. Our Father, we thank you for this day and the blessings that you've given us. Lord, we thank you that we have this time. I pray that, Lord, you would open our hearts, that, Lord, we might see wonderful things out of your word. And, Lord, may we see our completion in you. Lord, may we recognize the truth that we have and not just who you are, but, Lord, what you've done for us. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your goodness. And, Father, we ask that you'd come and speak to us. And we'll just give you all the praise and glory for all that you do. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So look forward to having you guys here this coming Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, here back in our main worship service. And thank you for taking time to be with us. And we hope you have a good night. Uh, God bless you. And we'll talk to you a little later.